my pleasure to attend the 37th uh, annual conference of our uh, esteemed society. Uh, my topic today will be about uh, uh, a, a, a trend now, which is uh, the occult hepatitis B and the uh, effect of this uh, infection uh, on our hemodialysis patients. Uh, ever since the first outbreak of hepatitis in hemodialysis units in the late 1960s, a number of hepatotropic viruses transmitted by blood and other body fluids have been identified. Hepatitis B virus is a hepatotropic, double-stranded DNA virus, which in itself is not a cytopathic. Hepatitis develops as a result of the host's immune reaction towards infected hepatocytes. This uh, diagrammatic uh, diagram, uh, this diagram shows the structure of the virus with the uh, proteins of the virus, and the, the double-stranded DNA, the capsule, and the surface antigen. And this is how the virus, on the other slide, this is uh, how the virus uh, looks on uh, under electromagnetic. This is how the virus looks under the electron microscope. The epidemiology, it's estimated that about 400 million uh, people are infected worldwide with this virus or got infected, not necessarily with active infection now. And the numbers are decreasing uh, nowadays uh, with, the, with the precautions and the, the vaccination. Uh, nevertheless, the prevalence of HIBO, uh, hepatitis B virus infection in dialysis patients mirrors the epidemiologic status of the population in a particular geographic location. Patients undergoing chronic hemodialysis potentially have an increased risk of exposure to viral hepatitis by the use of common equipment. Additionally, especially in the past and uh, uh, before the era of erythropoietin, uh, introduction, uh, many of our patients used to receive multiple blood transfusions which increases the risk of infection. This is a very nice study done uh, by Mansoura University and they showed that there is a decline of viral hepatitis prevalence among asymptomatic Egyptian blood donors and that was uh, hope, uh, uh, that was uh, hope for our patients and they studied the prevalence over uh, in, uh, seven years or eight years from 2000 to 2007, showing that the prevalence is decreasing. Hepatitis B virus is relatively stable in the environmental and remains environment and it remains viable for at least seven days on environmental surfaces at room temperature in absence of any visible blood and still results in transmission. And this is very important because just common cleaning of the equipment is not sufficient for uh, killing the virus. Uh, it's a very resistant one. And transmission occurs via direct contact with blood, as in blood transfusions, or mucous membranes, as in sexual contacts, or via the percutaneous route upon contact with blood or body fluids, as a needle stick injury. This diagram shows the fate of acute infection. It's whether it become chronic or develops to acute hepatitis, and usually acute hepatitis post uh, hepatitis B virus uh, recovers, or it may develop into fulminant hepatitis, which might recover, or it is a very serious uh, problem that might lead to death. Again, subclinical hepatitis uh, infections occur and usually they recover spontaneously. What are the diagnostic criteria for chronic hepatitis B? You should have a hepatitis B surface antigen positive for about six months, serum hepatitis B virus DNA above 20,000 international units, and the other levels Smaller levels between 2,000 and 20,000 are often seen in hepatitis B, E antigen negative, chronic hepatitis B. Persistent or intermittent elevation in transaminases, 
liver biopsy showing chronic hepatitis with moderate or severe necroinflammation. Inactive hepatitis B surface antigen carrier state. You have hepatitis B surface antigen positive also for above six months. E antigen negative and E antibodies are positive. Serum hepatitis B viral load uh, of DNA is below 2000 and persistently normal transaminase levels. And liver biopsy confirms absence of significant hepatitis. Resolved hepatitis B, it's previously known history of acute or chronic hepatitis B or the presence of anti-hepatitis B core antibody plus or minus anti-hepatitis B surface antibodies. And hepatitis B surface antigen negative, of course, and undetectable serum hepatitis B virus DNA in the serum and normal transaminases as well. So, the occult hepatitis B. It is not a new entity and there are many reports of patients with hepatitis B virus evidence replication in the absence of detectable hepatitis B surface antigen uh, and occasionally other hepatitis B viral serological markers. Hepatitis B surface antigen is the established serological marker for the diagnosis of acute or chronic hepatitis B virus infection and the absence of hepatitis B surface antigen in serum has been used as a surrogate marker for the absence of DNA and active viral replication. However, the development of highly sensitive molecular biology techniques has allowed detection of low levels of hepatitis B virus DNA in the serum and or liver of patients without uh, detectable hepatitis B surface antigen. This peculiar form of chronic viral infection has been termed occult hepatitis B virus infection. Individuals with occult hepatitis B virus infection usually have serological evidence of previous exposure to the virus, mainly antibodies, to core antigen, although the absence of any serological marker related to hepatitis B virus has also been described in some cases. And several possible explanations for hepatitis B viral DNA persistence in the absence of hepatitis B surface antigen uh, proposed, uh, 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 being proposed. A low rate of hepatitis B virus replication due to host immune response or co-infection with other infectious agents may account for occult status in the majority of the cases. However, occult hepatitis B virus infection may also be due to mutations that inhibit hepatitis B surface antigen expression or change hepatitis B surface antigen antigenicity, thus preventing detection by commercial available assays. This study uh, of uh, occult hepatitis B in patients with hemodialysis uh, by Ferreira in uh, Italy showed that it is a clinical entity in which the individual is positive for hepatitis B virus DNA in liver tissue but has undetectable serum hepatitis B surface antigen by routinely method uh, and positive or negative hepatitis B virus DNA in the serum. And when the hepatitis B virus DNA in the serum is positive, it often uh, does not exceed 200 international units per ml, which is a very low uh, viral load. Again, another study compared uh, many dialysis centers all over the world. What we uh, can see here that uh, two centers from Egypt were involved and they showed that the percentage of occult hepatitis among our patients is around 4% of the studied patients. In the hepatitis uh, uh, monthly, B virus infection among hemodialysis patients uh, uh, in Tehran was studied and the prevalence of occult hepatitis B in hemodialysis they found it to vary from 0 to 20 percent in different studies and it requires more investigations which more uh, with more sample size to find out the impact uh, of occult hepatitis in transmission of hepatitis B infection hemodialysis patients. 
they uh, concluded that although the vast majority of studies on the prevalence of occult hepatitis B in hemodialysis point toward a low prevalence, it seems advisable to search for occult hepatitis B under certain conditions. Screening for hepatitis B virus infection should be permanent in dialysis services and it seems sensible to test for occult hepatitis B whenever there are co-infections, especially HCV and HIV in patients with isolated anti-hepatitis B core, those with liver disease of an intermediate, uh, indeterminate uh, cause and in renal transplant candidates. This diagnosis can minimize the transmission of the virus under these conditions as preventive measures can be taken and carriers can be screened for hepatocellular carcinoma and serious complications due to the activation after renal transplantation can be uh, prevented. This uh, study I had uh, the privilege to uh, supervise uh, in the Faculty of uh, Pharmacy, Cairo University, uh, 2010, and it was published in the, in the editor. And uh, we studied also a group of patients on hemodialysis uh, from one to three years dialysis time. And the overall prevalence that we found in adult uh, end-stage renal disease patients on maintenance hemodialysis was between uh, around 5%, between 6 to 4% in those with positive and negative hepatitis C virus respectively, showing that hepatitis C virus co-infection was uh, a bit higher risk uh, for this condition. And all patients were, were with longer hemodialysis periods, those who were on dialysis for a longer time showed more prevalence, those who received uh, multiple blood transfusions before, or hepatitis B core antibody positivity also be screened for probable occult hepatitis B virus infection. Furthermore, we recommend that the results of any occult hepatitis B virus study be evaluated in light of the interaction between the hepatitis B surface antigen positivity for a certain region and the frequency of hepatitis B virus mutants in that region because every country have uh, known uh, uh, mutations for the virus and that can be detected by highly sensitive and specific commercially uh, available serological tests. And uh, as we know that Egypt has the highest prevalence of hepatitis C virus infection in the world or we used to, hopefully we are eradicating it now uh, for the last uh, year. Uh, however, the detection of occult hepatitis B requires assays with the highest sensitivity, as we said, and uh, these uh, tests, we are uh, now having the Copastatinum hepatitis B virus test, which detects up to six uh, international uh, uh, units, or 10, from six to 10 international units uh, per milliliter. It's a very sensitive test and uh, the prevalence of anti-hepatitis B core antibody as well as the history of hepatitis B virus infection uh, in group one of the study uh, with hepatitis C virus RNA positive ones was more common than group two with negative hepatitis C virus RNA. And this condition is relatively more common in patients with HCV infection that seems to be related to influence on the replicative capacity and latency of hepatitis B virus and the main risk factors for airing these infections. The authors also that we revised the literature uh, uh, did not find any relation between the transaminases, especially the alanine transaminase level and the presence of hepatitis B virus DNA in the serum, so do not uh, rely on transaminase level. Uh, and in our opinion, by that time, the liver biopsy provides the uh, most uh, relevant data than transaminase liver, uh, uh, levels uh, regarding liver damage, specifically in hemodialysis patients. Again, the, uh, another study showed that top of the hepatitis infection from hemodialysis patients uh, that is based on uh, the current epidemiological data, we have limited information on the clinical impact and therapeutic management of occult hepatitis B in chronic uh, dialysis patients. And in most situations, only prevalent studies which do not 
include histopathology or outcome events are available. And this absence of data needs to be uh, rectified in addition to hepatitis B surface antigen testing, hepatitis B virus DNA, and assessment is encouraged in, the, in this population, especially among uh, those hemodialysis patients who are hepatitis B virus RNA positive or who have an isolated anti hepatitis B core test. Result, such a, a, an approach could be effectively helping the diminution of the incidence and outbreaks of hepatitis B virus analysis centers. Prevention, which is the main topic, rather than treatment in this condition, of course, there is universal precaution stuff as well. Uh, fluid impermeable garments, gloves, and uh, to be used whenever there is a tension for exposure to dark gloves must be changed from patient to patient, protective eyewear and face shields, isolation of the patient uh, and segregation, as we will see uh, later also, uh, no recapping, and all the, the universal precautions that we know, uh, active vaccination was a breakthrough, and segregation, of course, is uh, an important strategy for uh, prevention. These are the equivalents usually used for prevention. Hepatitis B vaccination, we have hepatitis B uh, recombinant uh, vaccine, which was introduced in 1982. Two types of vaccine have been uh, licensed, plasma-derived and recombinant. Primary vaccination comprises three intramuscular doses of five vaccine, with the second and the third dose given one to six months, uh, respectively after the first and alternative schedule of four doses given zero, one, two, and six months to whom the patients has been approved for interim speed. This is the uh, dose uh, adjustment. You can see that when we, uh, for patients about 20 years old, on not on dialysis, you have uh, you get 10 microgram and then three doses zero one and six or over three doses sorry. Those who are on dialysis and about 20 years, 40 microgram also three doses below uh, 20 years only three doses of the recombinant vaccine. Why Energex has the four doses as we mentioned before? Segregation of course is important and it. Uh, reduces the infection up to 80% in hemodialysis patients. Treatment, the following drugs are currently licensed for the therapy of chronic hepatitis B, interferon, uh, standard interferon and related interferon, nucleoside and nucleotide analogs, lamivudine, uh, adipovir, dipipofoxine, uh, and indicavir, tenbivudine, and tenbivudine. The complications for interferon in decompensated liver cirrhosis, child DOC, marked thrombocytopenia or leukopenia, cerebral seizures, depression, pregnancy, immune suppression, uh, status like AIDS, organ transplant, etc., autoimmune disease, example thyroiditis, and heart disease, heart failure, coronary heart disease, multiple renal insufficiency, and severe bacterial infections. The uh, antivirus for hepatitis B virus infection advantages and disadvantages in the field, as we said, advantages is of low uh, loss, uh, uh, low growth, shorter uh, duration treatment, and uh, uh, disadvantages should be parental and has poor tolerance, damage in its oral, excellent tolerance used in end stage liver disease, but drug resistance is common, and for bad oral also with excellent tolerance and drug disease is less common. Again, these are the uh, comparison between the three of them. Now, I want to highlight that Adipovir is uh, to be used very cautiously because it has potential nephrotoxicity. Lamidogen therapy should be considered in any renal transplant candidates with chronic hepatitis B and elevated transmitters or circulating hepatitis B virus DNA more than 10,000 copies. And there are reports of worsening of renal graft function in patients treated uh, with Adipovir and Indicavir may be an optimal choice for drug patients going for renal transplantation. Uh, this also is those uh, dosage adjustment for Lamidogen when you have uh, Estimated GFR about 50, then you have uh, you give uh, full dose and then you reduce the dose and below 5 you should go to 10 percent, 10, 10 milligrams, which is 10 percent of the original dose. The category of responses you have biochemical, biological, uh, histopathological, and complete uh, remission. These are uh, schedules for it. I don't think we have time for uh, to go through it. Thank you.